There he goes. I think you somehow, I think it was a double hit somehow. <laughs> yeah, we have like a really, really short one, but I will begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we uh, thank you for this day. Good Lord, thank you for the students. Pray you'd uh, just guide my thoughts today, help us to uh, accomplish much love for your glory. We name and pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, so it occurred to me that uh, there, there, is a, there is a problem with your education, possibly, and it um, depends on who you are. But um, so if we think about a curve, so I want to talk about curves in R3 and what's called the Frenet frame. Because I don't think all of you have actually ever looked at that. I mean, if you had my calculus 3, we looked at it. But if you didn't have my calculus 3, I bet you didn't look at it. Am I right? I'm right, yeah. So, and that is unfortunate because it's an important topic that should not be neglected, but whatever. All right, so <clears throat> here's a curve. And um, so I'm thinking about a curve in XYZ space. And it's, it's a parameterized curve. It's a path, all right? And we're assuming that this curve is <clears throat> kind of well-behaved. So in particular, we can find its tangent vector like that, right? So here's the velocity vector, right? And, but we're not interested in velocity. We're just interested in the direction. So we're going to say the unit tangent, direction, unit tangent vector, unit tangent. All right, and then <clears throat> I propose that um, you can um, look at the um, see here how to construct the next thing. Um, well, let's look at this. So the unit tangent vector. What's what different? What what equation does that satisfy? It satisfies t dot t equals to one, right? It's a unit tangent vector, and technically speaking. Um, I should probably say that I'm using arc length. So this would be like alpha of s. So s is arc length. So I'm thinking of this as being a unit speed curve, just for the sake of me not forgetting various factors. And um, so the, the dot product of t with t is 1, right? What happens if we differentiate that? I'm differentiating with respect to arc length, of course. But you can see then that the derivative of t, if it's non-zero, right? Uh, well, I suppose even if, the, if t prime is zero, then it's still perpendicular. But certainly t prime dot t is zero. So this suggests that t prime is perpendicular to t, right? And if t prime is non-zero, we can normalize it. And in so doing, form what's called the normal vector. Okay, so definition, n is equal to 1 over the length of t prime times t prime. This is the so-called unit normal. Now, more than this, you notice that we've got an equation here, right? We've got t prime, um, which is really dt ds. I'll write that out. dt ds is equal to what? It's equal to the length of dt ds um, times, um, times the unit normal, right? So that, that length is important, all right? And we define, in fact, definition, kappa, is equal to the norm of dt ds. This is the so-called curvature. It's the curve curvature. <laughs> curvature in the sense of a curve. Um, <clears throat> example. We could have alpha, um, alpha of s equal to say, r cosine. Um, oh, now I got to think. Cosine of uh, goodness gracious. Ah. 
how do we give this stupid thing unit speed? Uh, I guess I'm supposed to do s divided by 2 pi r, perhaps, comma r sine of s over 2 pi r. We'll find out if my form, fa if my factor here is right or not shortly. And um, uh, let's say um, 3. <laughs> okay. Just keep it simple. That is quite clearly the parameterization of a circle in the z equals 3 plane with radius r. Um, what's the alpha ds? probably got too carried away with my, so can you guys tell me if I have chose the right, um, I mean I might need to do some kind of surgery so to speak here on my formula. I want this to be a unit, I want it to be unit speed so the velocity should be a unit vector, is it? It's not, is it? Because I got carried away, I don't need to, uh, I don't need that 2 pi. Oh. Um, by not putting sine in one of the places? So that's the short answer to that. But as you can see, I should really erase the two pi's. And in so doing, what happens? There we go. Now it's good. See, now we've got the r's cancel, and we've got minus sine, comma, cosine, comma, zero. That's a unit vector. Its length is one. See, the, the, the length of the velocity vector is ds ds. It means ds dt generally, right? So if my parameter is actually s, it should be ds ds. It should be one. It should be unit speed. So the previous, the first formula wasn't actually an arc length parameterization of the circle, it was something else. But that is an arc length parameterization of the circle. And so great, my, um, so my, what I'm trying to get at here, guys, is that the unit tangent is minus sine of s over r cosine of s over r zero. You guys, you, you, you guys got it? And then, so what's t prime? T prime, or dt, d, dt ds, what's that? We've got, what, minus 1 over r, cosine of s over r, right? Comma what? Comma minus 1 over r, sine of s over r, comma 0, which, of course, we can write as what? This is actually equal to... one over r, right, times minus cosine of s over r minus the sine of s over r. This is a unit vector. This is the unit normal, right? This constant out front is what we call the curvature. of course, as a function of arc length. And since the arc length is a unique geometric description of the curve up to a starting point, we're describing intrinsic geomet ge geometric data on the curve, right? If you choose another arc length parameterization, all you're doing is shifting where S starts, so you're going to find the same curvature for that given point, suitably parameterized, adjusting for your different starting point for the arc length. Now, that's not a frame in R3 yet, right? But I've showed you, see, what we're going to do then, you could think of it this way. You've got E1 is T, right? E2 is N, right? 
and the frame which is adapted to the curve in the standard way, we get the third thing, which you call the binormal. So B, which is by construction T cross N. Right? Then if you look at it, <clears throat> if you make a matrix of functions, namely E1, E2, E3, right? Well, this is going to be an element of SO3. It's a rotation matrix because it's a right-handed triple. So you can calculate its determinant, and it will be 1. And in fact, that's a rotation. Rotation matrix. That's the attitude matrix corresponding to this frame. And so you could, cal you could calculate the, um, the connection forms, right? What was it, omega? Was, how's it go? Trying to remember, how do we construct the, uh, the, connection, the connection form from the, the, the matrix of connection forms from, the, from the, ma the attitude matrix and the differential? What was it? It's like DA times A transpose or something like this. You guys don't remember. Was that in my, where was that? Uh, DA times, it is DA times A transpose, what do you know? So if we, could, if we were to calculate DA times A transpose here, and we go through the usual song and dance because it's an adapt, it's in a, you know, it's an SO3 matrix, it satisfies that same standard jibber jabber, that linear algebra really of the Carton structure equations. But when we adapt that frame to the curve, right? Um, I mean, well, really, we only have the frame adapted to the curve. The point is that the Cartan structure equations descend to the curve. And when they descend to the curve, you get, um, <clears throat> sorry, the guys, um, you know, what's the omega ij, if you look at it as a matrix, what, what does it look like? It's, it's anti-symmetric, right? And um, let's see here how to say this. Uh, so to start with, we have the uh, T prime. T prime is N prime. So it's like uh, half, uh, I'm trying to think where it goes. Um, I think it's this. I think it's kappa goes here. We get zero. We get minus kappa down here. And then what I can't remember is if I put a tau here and we put a minus tau down here, that's the torsion, and put a zero there. So it happens that the omega 1, 3 by construction of the Frenet frame is zero. That's happening because the, D, the um, DTDS is kappa n. So my, my, point, my point, guys, is when you flesh this out, you can see yet another application of these Cartan structure equations back to the Frenet frame. But there's a larger point here that I'm trying to make, which is just that given a curve in R3, we can, const we can calculate um, a natural frame attached to it. Think of those as a moving coordinate system, basically, Travis. Like, so that's kind of, from a physics perspective, it's very interesting. We can create moving coordinate systems with this, you know? And, um, but there's a, there's a curvature that tells you how the... Um, well, the curvature basically tells you how the, how the normal vector is, what, what's, what's going on with the normal vector as it relates to the tangent vector, right? Um, is the, but the change in the tangent vector has to happen in the normal direction. That's what that equation up there says. If, the, if there's a change in the tan unit tangent, it can't happen in the unit tangent direction. It actually has to happen in the normal direction. So we can rotate some of the unit tangent into the normal in the next, in the, as the, we go, as we progress in time. And then the other thing which I haven't explained yet is this, 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 this B. And if you differentiate, <clears throat> if you differentiate this equation, you can prove that B prime, a short argument that I give in calculus three shows that D prime has, B prime has to be equal to some, some number, some function really times, times N prime as well. That's actually more or less forced on us from this, this equation right here, from its definition. And if we were to 
anyway, it, it's not entirely obvious why that is, but it's a definition then that um, dbds dot n, I'm sorry, not n prime, but just n, um, dp, 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 dbds dot n is equal to minus the torsion. So, and that, when you study it more carefully, actually describes if the curve is like lifting up off its plane of motion. So the torsion describes the, the non-planarity of the curve, how it's twisting up off its like infinitesimal plane of motion. The circle has torsion zero. In fact, there's a theorem, a curve is planar, it lies in a plane if and only if the torsion is zero. Uh, subject to this stuff making sense. Um, and this also generalizes to, to n dimensions. You can talk about Frenet curves in n dimensions. A Frenet curve in n dimensions is a curve such that the derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, the fourth derivative, the fifth derivative, out to the n minus one derivatives um, are linearly independent. So you can use those, Gram-Schmidt them, and create an adapted frame to a Frenet frame. And in such doing, in so doing, if you do it correctly, you can look at basically the connection coefficients for that and not just have a curvature and a torsion, but have a first curvature, second curvature, curvature, third curvature, fourth curvature, fifth curvature. Need more curvatures it describes on describe how it's lifting up off the various planes of motion, which are possible in more dimensions. Really, torsion is no different than curvature. It's the second curvature. It's just describing departure from planarity, whereas the first curvature is just describing departure from linear, linear, linearity of the curve. But they're really both kind of the same thing. Although, you, you can talk yourself into them being really different in three dimensions. They're really not, if you study the, the generalization. A good place to read about that is in Wolfgang uh, Kernels. Um, he has a great, it's probably the, it will probably be the book, it's the standard book for the elementary differential geometry course. Um, if, I think I've heard, I've heard, I read somebody say that once in a comment somewhere. I thought, you know what, that's, that's right. That, that book is really, it's very, very good. It's got a lot in it. It's kind of no nonsense, but it's not overly terse either. Okay, anyway, so I just wanted to give you a short run through of curve curvature because what I'm going to talk about once we get our pizza is the Gauss-Binet theorem. Now, Gauss-Binet theorem is in part based on a different kind of curvature, so-called geodesic curvature, which is based on measuring rotation of E1 and E2 in the adapted frame to a, to a geometric surface, surface. But it's very much based on having some understanding of this Frenet curvature as a backdrop. So if you have never heard of that before, I don't think the geodesic curvature would make as much sense, which is why I'm at least giving you a, a snapshot. So, so if you'd like to see it expanded about four lectures, if you watch my calculus three, I think I spent about four days on it, right? Something like that. Yeah. Well, you can, you can hit the off button for now. Travis will start again when we get pizza.